Yeah, <coughs> All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Angry Birds 115, and welcome to the behind the scenes of Christmas Gathering. Uh, my latest Minecraft animation for made entirely for Christmas. Now this one's going to be. A, now this one is a special animation because I have I have a featured. Uh, four people that have attended in Black Plasma community or just patrons or any other uh, associated Black Plasma studios. So, I just, so this video is basically how I did things and such and such. So yeah, and why, the reason why I couldn't uh, render this out instead of making this unrendered, which it is. Okay, so uh, this is the map of choice I have made. This is map of choice I got for uh, the setting. So this animation is uh, 300 frames long. As you can see, or oh, actually more than 300. It's about 3,360 3, frames. And this animation runs about 30 frames per second. It's, uh, let's see. If I can Slide it over, but oh god, it's working. Yeah, the thing is, uh, if I have Blender open and OBS open, it might lag a bit. So, okay, okay. So here is 30 frames per second, which means if uh, if there are three th about 3,000 frames, and it's and the animation runs about 30 frames per second. I'm not going to do all that calculation just to bore you though. But anyways, I'll get to the part where I uh, do things. Uh, so what we have here is a camera. Don't know why it's shooting out a big uh, line. But if we go into here, we'll see how it goes out. See, look familiar? Good. Well, except that you don't see all these uh, stuff in the animation. But if I turn only render, now you see it's just like it. And we have what we have here is the Christmas gathering by only. This is actually a uh, text box. So it's like what you use like in Photoshop, Google, Word, whatever. Except it's only uh, except it's uh, 3D. I pull this out. It's actually uh, a 3D thing. Well, you can well there is a possibility that you can make a 3D by extruding the whole thing. If I press E, okay, never mind. But yes, there is a way to extrude it. Not my method, but yes, there is a way you can make the text three instead of two. Why did I didn't do that? Well, because I want to flat on the sign, which that makes sense. And for these gray little things, they're called bones for each figure. So. How do I uh, make these characters visible and go through one shot by shot and stuff? Well, since the underground is not a place where I would place the camera, so like this, who would want to watch that, right? So I pretty much put some characters down here willy nilly so that they will not be in the camera shot until they are at the part where they're supposed to be. So it's just about a matter of placing things, and making things, or just making it into the rumors or whatever. Uh, what else? So let's fast forward a bit. This is the timeline, by the way, down here. All right, so you got the uh, the characters walking. It's me. It's Caleb. So in this uh, hallway, you have got what used to be a fountain from here to here. Yeah, uh, in the, about the Minecraft map, it doesn't have a Christmas things. But it doesn't have the Christmas de decorations. I put them there myself, including those uh, uh, trees. This used to be the this used to be a water fountain. Uh, oh, one on the ceiling. Ah. Oh, yeah, the water fountain goes from the ceiling 
uh, to uh, the port. And since it's Christmas and it's winter time and stuff, I decided to uh, uh, play it with ice. Just to make it more. Just to add more decoration. It's kind of a nice touch for some people. And I don't pretty much use the. Uh, the second floor. So I just I mostly use the first floor, which has uh, more of the stuff where the gathering will most likely be in, in the living room, gathering room, video game room, whatever you can call it. Yes, yeah, I mean even though it's kind of much, it's not that much. So that's why I would prefer. I mean, just saying the first floor would be appropriate for a gathering. Alright, so you got here is the kitchen and the dining area and other stuff, living room. And what you got here is the Christmas tree, the presents. And here is uh, the Black Plasma Community, third place. And as you can see, I misspelled Redner with Redner. So, yeah, I kind of misspelled that. Sorry, guys. But yes, uh, this is actually a. Uh, this is an actual thing that just happened. Eh, it's just only minor, but if you look on the Black Plasma Community uh, December roundup, you'll see that Arbor 6617 is announcing the top contestants. On third place, uh, there was my name. So that explains why there's this little uh, award thing here. And you got here is another living room. I don't quite use this much because it will be too much work and doesn't mean I'm lazy it's just too much work to put everything here and animate which I'll get to that in a sec ah uh, yeah the chest the chests do have bones too which means you can uh, move them as well so if I go click on the bones of the chest you go to pose mode and yeah you can open it this is only for people that don't know much about blender and if you do know about Blender, you need to disregard that. These are actual laptops about where Jack Cooper and the crew are playing. Uh, if you're wondering what they're playing, they're playing Heroes of the Storm. Uh, me and my friends have been playing Heroes of the Storm a lot, so I've been so I just figured that I, they're pretending to play that game, just not on the laptop screen. Which I don't know how to like add actual images in Blender. So we got here is Felicia. So Felicia is actually an Inkling OC of Splatoon 2. Uh, yeah, Felicia from Meet Felicia Splatoon 2 OC. That's an actual video I've made, and I'll put a link in the description below. So you get. So this skin is made by Mangle215. So Felicia has the exact. Uh, gear and clothes and stuff. You got the the cherry punk boots, the sailor shirt, the hat, exactly what she would look like in actual Splatoon 2. It's just in Minecraft form. And speaking of Mangle 215, this is Mangle 215's uh, skin. She doesn't she, she doesn't actually play Minecraft, uh, but she she suggested that I should uh, add her to some some of my projects just to give credit. For example, she made a Felicia right here and I should give her credit. Yeah, she's bored. Looking at her looking at her phone. She's bored this way, always. Uh you got link we got link here. So most of you people might say, what the heck? The reason it, it just to give a nerdy reference here, sorry. The reason I would add him and make him as the role of the chef or cook of this small kitchen it's because he cooks in breath of the wild and i just figured hmm if he cooks why not have him cook here just cooking i don't know helium steak high roll steak yeah so yeah. i mean people mostly wouldn't care but if you're wondering yeah that's why just to put some references in it. And you got the hot tub, or no, hot spring, hot tub, whatever, indoor, hot, whatever, I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is water. And I would do the special effects on water of what Arbiter 617 showed on his tips, 
But uh, since this is unrendered, I don't know how it'll be like in in the actual animation. But I could anyways because you could see the inside of the caverns, and when I made it, when I made a sh camera shot of animating in this area, it'll just look weird. I mean, yeah, you can actually see the underground caverns when we got the water, but underneath here is not. I don't know, it's just how it is. Yeah, the water's like transparent. Alright. So, uh, without further ado, I'll explain how I animated, animated things. So, you got your camera. You got the walk cycles. And me looking at the watch, which is not actually a watch. Let's call it an invisible watch. So, the walk cycle on Caleb. Uh, I actually uh, uh, followed R617's uh, walking cycle tip or tutorial on his uh, channel, which I followed the second method, which is was uh, walking him outside of his uh, rig, which is uh, this one. Yeah. So I did a few. I did the keyframes. I had to keyframe him step, him stepping and stepping one at a time and in the parts where he lift up his foot to do another step I like normal walking and we do that uh, uh, the back bob just to make these more natural but any actual animation didn't look like it but it's the best I could do so you got the part with the doorbell and the camera switches next shot and let me go back go back frames so Depending on how much characters there are in a scene or a shot or whatever, I usually keyframe everything from one scene to another scene, from frame to frame, like a jump. So these characters are right here, right? I'm gonna go back a frame or back frames. Okay, I think it's like right here. Okay, so, yeah, you see it disappear, right? So, and these characters, the rigs, are keyframed to jump on uh, this spot from underneath. So if I go over a frame, then I have to back up. Go back, go down, go back up. And for Angry Birds 115, which is me, so, like I said, every time a new camera shot comes, I keyframe the rigs as though going uh, using the camera from shot to shot just to make an alignment. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Okay, so we go back. So uh so as the camera jumps from one shot to another hold on. Yeah, there we go. So as the camera uh, camera moves from one shot to another, so does uh, the rigs. So that's why you would see something like this when we turn off on uh, when we render. So, some, uh, so that is why you would see something like this. So the camera jumps, so does my character. And yet again, depending on how much characters I put in into a scene, or depending on how much characters I want from one shot to another shot, I have to keyframe uh, all those rigs into the next uh, shot. So this animation is quite challenging for me because there is so much so much people and I have to do so much keyframing. But I was able to handle it and I put in so much effort. I did not do it without laziness. Even though it seemed I did, but no, I didn't. So, okay, hold on. We, uh, so this is the part where I open the door and let the girls in. And instead of them walking into the house and moving over there, I keyframe that as well. So, if I can see, there we go. So as the camera moves one shot to another, so it's the rigs. Uh, so... 
I do that just to save time and not waste my energy on things. Although it seems like it. So see, if I move from one frame to another, it jumps. All these bricks jump. Oh, record. Two minutes, okay. So uh, that's that. Yeah. And how I did it was the, at the time where I commence the the next camera shot, I move the bones back to like the pads and stuff, turn them around, make them pose to whatever it, it wherever they're supposed to be, and keyframe those. Same thing as the camera, except a bit more precise and more complex. It may seem too much, but I have to get used to it for a while. I've been doing this for uh, some of my animations that involve like more camera shots and all, and more uh, movement or scenery something. But yeah, uh, that's that's how it was supposed to be. So if I play this. Okay, so this is the thing. You, so I don't know. So up here, whenever I play the video, it's at like one point something frames per second. And that is how bad it goes because I because of this uh, laptop and because I've been playing and because of OBS and Blender at the same time. So it gets slow, but it's all right. So if I play it, everything jumps to the next shot. Now the way I handle animations, I usually make the camera move more. So hold on, let me go, let me go to a specific shot. Yeah, that was weird. Oh, you know, okay, you know what? Uh, oh, let me let me explain this for a sec. So, see how, like, these two characters are moving weirdly, like, sliding and stuff, and McCree's just waiting? But, uh, but that's okay, because as long as they're, oh, hold on, I mean, you can see the bones, but still, about uh, their actual thing, as long as they're out of the camera shot, it'll feel like that they're still walking up the stairs and they're, like, not stopped all of a sudden. Like, see, like, they're walking past the camera and walking past me? In actuality, they just stopped moving. And I continue to move. But only because they're out of the camera shot. And I'll just... And I'll tell people that they're still walking. Yet again, uh, just to put in less work, but and good time saving. I don't know. It's me, but you can think it otherwise. All right. So the part where I'm talking about the movement and characters and stuff. Oh wait. Uh, let me explain uh, this. No. Oh. Nope, that's yeah, that's Monica and Atsuki. I'll get I'll explain that in a sec. Going to our archimage in spin town. Okay, they got I'm way back. Nope, or maybe not. Okay, never mind. Okay, <coughs> so uh, we go to the, sh the, the area where I shake Spintown's hand. I would usually, I would sometimes uh, leave a little uh, pause so that the shot or moment or thing, movement doesn't like uh, move on too fast. Like it's good to have a, a little bit of a small pause between uh, scenes so that your animation doesn't go fast or too fast. And uh, so hold on. So I I was planning to uh, go into the video editor, but since I'm spending so much time, I don't have time. But I'll explain what I've done with the video editing and stuff. 
Okay, so the part where these were Connie and Jordan, Jor girl Jordan, enter the house, uh, this part kind of went on too fast, unfortunately. Even though I was following like how much seconds are supposed to be, but that that this these parts kind of went on too fast, and I was forced to like slow it down on the video editor, which looked a bit laggy. But that's the only way I have to slow it down. Like the part where uh, I open the door and the whole scene looks like it's lagging and glitchy or something. Uh, that, that wasn't the actual internet or something, or your device or whatever, that was me slowing the video down because it was uh, too fast. It was too fast for the audience to be satisfied or something, but that's the only thing I could do. I would change the, the movements in the, the dope sheet, but if I, if, I made it, if I made the size of the timing larger, then... Uh, I would mess up the whole animation on this part, but I'll do. I would do other things otherwise, but uh, there was just so much keyframes I don't know which one's which, and I just I was forced to slow it down. I'm sorry about that, but it is a huge animation. I mean, of course, most animations are huge, but uh, still, I wasn't able to. I wasn't able to track down which is which. But this part where I opened the door, there was no pause. It was like a fast whoop thing and over to this shot. And then and for some circumstances it will not look good because it was, it was just too fast. You weren't able to process it. And people might not enjoy it. Like I said, it's good. It's sometimes good to leave uh, some pauses between shots so that it's so that the animation is paced. Like after I shook Spin Town's hand, there was this split second pause and then Sophie Cadden, Radiant 776 showed up. And there was also oh wait, there was also, there was also a little pause here too. Like they're not moving on that split second, but that's alright because as long as the camera is moving, it just feels like no char the, the characters are not uh, stiff. Now this is the challenging part. Uh, so the enemy so. I had to animate these characters talking, but if you're gonna do that in some of your animations, you gotta you gotta have to randomize a bit. If you do it specifically, then it might not look good. I mean, of course, you would animate every character doing stuff one at a time, but in some cases, you would do it. You would do have them do stuff randomly, and then maybe clean it up later or add some extra things. Like for example. The characters blinking, or if you want to fix some stuff like, uh, okay, so let me click on the bones for a sec. So I have her torso like twisting, and her, and the arm just laying about, uh, going up, and her arm just uh, going places. Her image is uh, body also torso also twisting. So like that's what I mean by adding a bit of randomness to conversations. That's alright, because the viewer's attention, if I were to watch the anim if I were to watch this part in the animation, my eye would just either be at Mangle 215s or Jordan's. But as long as it's like that, it'll just give a feel that everyone's talking. Which is alright. It's alright. And it's also a good way to make or it's also a good way to make the characters not look stiff or stop moving. So as long as they're partially moving and the camera's moving, it just seems like everything's fine or normal. But if the camera's like not moving all the time in between shots and the characters not moving or anything or like for example, just moving their head and not the torso, it'll just seem like unnatural. It'll just be weird. So I would, uh, so I would move the camera a little bit, or make the camera move like side to side, up and down, whatever. Just make make things more dynamic. Also have the characters' other bones move when 
uh, when their body parts are moving something. I think this is the part where I'm trying to explain, but I got to the other stuff. Oh yeah. There we go. There we go. <coughs> so uh, that's how it works. You just gotta add a little bit of movement in some of the bones, so that it may seem natural. Not all people are frozen. Like even you might, even you may think you can stay frozen and not do anything for a while. Still, you're blinking, you're moving slightly, even though nobody notices. Nobody is a mannequin. So that's my tip. Nobody is a mannequin. This is there. Oh yeah, uh, the camera shots of different groups. So if I go out from the camera for a sec and uh, go to the part where everyone's talking. So if I uh, go to the part where the camera the gathering starts. Yet again, there was the jump. Jeremy, everyone's here. So if I go to this uh, shot right here, where the camera is right here, you see that this group is moving, only moving, and the others are not. And they're moving right here as well. But that's okay, because this is the camera. This is not the camera. So as long as the camera is like shooting particular like groups or something, it'll be fine. And it'll just seem like everyone's like still talking and stuff. Just to uh, uh, minimize stress or something. Like if you have too many people in the scene, you can just uh, uh, have, have them take turns of moving. Like for example, it, so if I go back to the shot, so this is the group's first turn, so they move, while the others are not. And then this group's turn, they start moving. And then the other, it starts moving, the other is moving, right here, one at a time. So it's like taking turns or something, as long as the camera is in view. Like, for example, like you're not doing anything, you're just being yourself, and then you're asked to have yourself in a the picture, then you start, you know, Doing what you're told. So, yeah. So, what else am I to explain? Okay, so there's like, I don't know, moderation stuff. Moderate keyframing. Oh, yeah. Uh, if, <laughs> if there are many characters that are in one place and the camera's going on to that shot and yeah that's gonna be a bit stressful for people to like doing stuff in the back doing stuff in that one shot while everyone is in that one place it is kind of stressful yet again you can still have the camera move up to have a close-up of some people or groups or only two people or someone then I will just uh, uh, count it yet again if the camera's in view, then everyone. If the camera's in, in view, then what I would do is animate them uh, doing something. For example, I'm doing right now. Kale's out of shots, so he's not doing anything. I'll link is. So this part, there was a, a weird pause. I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but at least it wasn't that bad. Like, here, like it's moving, and like he turns, and there's this one second pause, and nothing else is moving. Uh, that was a bit, that was a long of a pause, so that's kind of so, uh, it's kind of like a slight mistake, or only a minor, but not a little bit. I mean, only a little bit, but no, it's not really a mistake, but but for some people, it might just look weird. However, this is a long pause here. Uh, there was a long pause where nothing happens. So, I would be careful of where I place my pauses between shots and stuff. Just to make sure things are dynamic. And you see here, Monica and Natsuki. More, reference, more references. Sorry, I couldn't add to Yori or Yuri. 
<laughs> Yet again, too much work. I don't limit myself. And then again, here's Natsuki, because, you know, she bakes. She has made cake, brought to the party. And see here, our award for having, achieving uh, 11 render challenges. I made that red mirror mistake. And it's where it says Merry Christmas and happy and have have a happy new year. And you know, all the other stuff where you have seen in the video. And the editing. Okay. So that's all for the animation of how I did things. Of course, I did add some Christmas decorations, but in Blender I should have added more, like paintings or displayed weapons and that kind of stuff. I should have added that, but like it, this animation was in a rush in case you forget. Or in case you didn't know. So, so let's go to the video editing part. I'm not going to go in Adobe Premiere because it's going to take long. So, how I did things in Adobe Premiere, the sh so the shots of where people are like having a conversation together, talking. I added a talking or a people talking background. You have you might not quite heard it, but there what I did add in the background. If you put in headphones in you might hear it. But I mean it's still fine if there is no audio of people talking. Yet again, either both ways work. And in the video editor, uh let's see. So there were shots that were indoor and outdoor. I used the win I used the win ambience for outside shots and like like no no wind and people talking ambience and indoor shots. And for the stepping audio, so I so the part where the for example uh, McCree and Jack Cooper. We can go back to that shot for a sec. There we go. Or I can do this one. So, see how they're walking. I did add a, I did add the audio and sounds for stepping, but since they're out of the camera shot, and I'll, I just added more. He's just doing that blink. Oops. Okay. Let me uh, let me go back here. So. So. Uh, for the camera, sh for the step sounds, so they just stopped right here, but you can't really tell because it's out of the camera shot. It's out of the camera shot. And I added in more uh, stepping sounds just to make the feel that they're still walking and going around the corner. So this is what you see. This border here is what you don't see. Darkened area. And again, this is the camera. So if we go to this shot here. Oh, not that shot. So the, this shot where they're walking. And as you can see, they stopped. But they're still walking because they're out of the camera shot. And I added the step audio just to make you feel that they're still walking. So I'm just trying to combine a nature or the laws of nature of sounds implementing into this world and I don't know anyone quite heard it but I did add a even though this is an out, outdoor shot I did add a people I did add the people talking in the background sounds here but I just want to make that effect where the door is closed or partially closed when I move down so this is the part where you don't hear sounds from indoors but if I make but he opens the door, and then you would hear uh, people inside the house. It's like normally what you hear when you go into parties or birthday parties. Like in the real in the real world, you go to a party on the app. You were greeted in the, in the, on the front door. You don't hear anything, and then the host or someone else opens the door, and you would hear people inside. So if you put that if you put that way logically, you'll know what I mean. So that's what I did in the video editor. So that's what I've done, in case uh, uh, you don't know. 
I just want to do that just because uh, make that little feel of things moving about and dynamicness. So this project is basically all about dynamicness. Yeah, it's challenging, but I have, but I have, I am able to do it. Yet this is in the rush. And I'm sorry, and sorry about the lagginess. It's just that Blender and OBS is running at the same time, which will stress out my computer. But they'll be able to, they'll be able to handle it. Uh, so yeah, that's the behind the scenes of the Christmas animation, the Christmas cat. So yeah, if you have not seen it, I'll put a link into the description below, so you'll be able to see the official, excuse me, the official animation. So that's it. I'm Angry Birds 115, and I'll see.